Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Dean's Hobby Stop in Owasso, Michigan. Dean's has one of the Midwest's largest selections of used kits at great prices. They also feature new kits and supplies as well. Call Dean's to get their mail order list featuring hundreds of vintage kits or check their website for great deals on both new and classic models. This review covers the Land Rover Series 3 109 long wheelbase station wagon. It's a 124 scale kit from Ravel, number 4498. Now Land Rovers are found wherever tough road conditions and rugged terrain require dependable and capable transportation under rigorous conditions. They're frequently found where only the Land Rover can travel and accommodate passengers and cargo in comfort relatively speaking. Now the Land Rover kit was released in 2019 as Ravel's 7047 at a skill level 3 using the US system, then re-released with new box art later the same year at a skill level 5 using the German system. The kit has about 104 pieces. It's molded in white and clear with soft black tires and it can be built either left or right hand drive. The finished kit is about seven and a quarter inches long, three and a quarter inches uh, wide, and about three and three quarter inches high. And, oh, oh, that sounds like Newt. Uh, and Newt's got something to say here. He's our program director. Uh, what's your question there, Newt? This one looks like a safari wagon from a wildlife show. Oh, right you are, Newt. Uh, nobody would be surprised to find a Land Rover on an African safari or even in Jurassic Park. They are well suited for off-road service and they're used in the most rugged places on earth. Here uh, are the um, contents of the kit and as you can see the, um, the trees are pretty nicely molded and uh, the parts are uh, relatively free of excess flash. Um, we'll be using mostly uh, two blue and uh, Ravel's uh, new enamel paints in the can for most of the finishing. But we also will employ some of the um, uh, you know super glue for fragile parts or occasionally some white glue or uh, crystal clear type glue for the uh, window glass. Now remember, use the manufacturer safety and use si uh, guidelines whenever you're using any of the products that you see or hear used in the review. Here are the decals for the kit. The register is good and uh, you can come from a lot of different countries uh, if um, you want to use some of the various plates here. Um, and also the standard um, uh, markings for the Land Rover. Um, you won't probably need any setting solution for these, but you will use uh, some warm water to make sure they come off properly and locate correctly. Construction starts assembling the engine and so put the block halves together and I painted the uh, halves um, uh, after they were uh, put together a Model Master burnt iron color and the starter is semi-gloss black. Then continue through uh, the assembly uh, with the instructions and there are paint call outs for almost every part on the uh, engine uh, for the whole model in fact. Uh, so go ahead and continue that until you get your assembled engine and then you can put together the transmission halves and um, uh, paint that and finish it uh, according to the instruction call outs and assemble those together. And next you can go ahead and um, attach the differential cover there to the, the differential. And then we're going to paint that semi-gloss black and detail it with a little bit of silver. Now we've got to run across our first uh, optional choice here. The floor pan, F17, has got an option for the two versions of seating. And those are pointed out in steps 32 and 38. And uh, whichever seating you choose will determine which of those holes you need to drill out. There's also a copyright logo there if you want to remove that easily. Your next uh, choice is going to uh, involve the uh, floor pans. Um, and you pick uh, which floor pan you want to use uh, depending on whether it's right or left hand drive. And um, I used um, uh, the parts, well actually I decided to build both um, uh, simultaneously. But for the model review, uh, we're, we're doing the right hand drive unit. And that has uh, some light uh, blue and uh, uh, detailing on it. And now we're going to get these parts out to assemble the chassis and uh, that uh, chassis gets painted aluminum 
and then we're going to um, assemble the other parts here uh, to it. They're, they're a gloss black. And then finally we're going to um, attach that completed front differential that we did uh, to the chassis. And that, uh, that locks both E25 and 24 into place. And now we can uh, get the leaf springs and the pieces out for that, the shocks. And we're going to paint the um, um, you know, springs a uh, semi-gloss black and then attach those to the chassis. And uh, the fuel tank then gets uh, painted semi-gloss black with little testers uh, silver. Uh, uh, also we're going to, uh, the front springs are going to be painted, um, I painted them aqua color. Uh, it's a dark gray silk matte color. And um, I followed that by attaching uh, those between the leaf spring and the chassis assembly. Now assemble the uh, two halves of the muffler and pipes there and I painted those uh, burnt iron and then the assembly gets attached to the chassis but don't put any glue on the front peg of the muffler. Um, the reason for that is for a future assembly of the exhaust in step 21. And now assemble the two halves of the rear differential um, you know with the cover there and that gets painted semi-gloss black and when it's dry you can install that onto the chassis assembly. Now let me remind you you have to remove uh, paint uh, as well as chrome if there's chrome parts uh, if you want the parts to adhere and stick together. Uh, next the uh, rear leaf springs um, can be um, taken out of the box and we're going to paint that semi-gloss black detailed with um, uh, aluminum and the, um, the gray silk. Now the rear leaf springs can be attached to the chassis assembly and the rear differential assembly. And next we're going to uh, mount the motor uh, into the chassis on its mounts there and also note that the exhaust pipes will be involved uh, and so uh, make sure that everything lines up and uh, go ahead and install the engine into place now. Now the drive shafts will get painted uh, gloss black and uh, they're detailed with uh, a mix that's pointed out in the instructions and then the front's installed between the transmission and the front differential and the rear likewise in the rear dif in between the rear differential and the transmission. And now get out the radiator and the fan shroud and they get painted testers uh, gloss black and the um, fan shrouds attached to the radiator and the radiator cap uh, gets detailed with some silver. And next we can paint the upper radiator hose you see there and then um, we're going to install the radiator into the, the uh, chassis and then we're going to um, attach the lower radiator hose to that lower portion and then now the uh, upper radiator hose uh, can be installed between the engine and the radiator. And then decal number 11 gets applied to the radiator cap. Now look for your mounting points and uh, scrape off the glue where that's uh, going to be attached to uh, add the chassis, uh, the floor pan uh, to the chassis. And this is where the exhaust pipe will need to be uh, slid into the floor pan and then attached to the manifolds uh, like we talked about earlier. Um, so you can go ahead and uh, finish that uh, bit of magic now. Now locate the shift hand handle. There's, uh, it's part C45 and it gets painted uh, gloss black. And depending on whether you want right or left hand drive, you'll attach it to either the left or right hand side of, um, of, of part F18. Uh, so you have to determine that, of course, before you attach it. And now we're going to locate these three other um, handles, you know, shift mechanism handles. And then um, th we're going to part... Uh, uh, G48, you know, it gets painted uh, semi-gloss black as the others and detailed with some uh, semi-gloss black and gray. Now, each one of these can have a different color to it depending on the color callouts. And then um, uh, uh, number decal number one gets applied to either G20 or 19 depending on, on whether you decided left or right hand a drive and G5 is applied to number G48. Now, I went with the front uh, first front seat option here, part E54 gets attached to 53 and, and 52 to 51, um, C51, and part E50 to 49. And I marked the seats on the bottom uh, with some, you know, identifiers so I knew which seat was which. The, the seat assemblies then are painted with 50-50 mix of a semi-gloss black and textures gray. And then 53 gets attached to the right side of C51 and C49 to the other side of seat 51.
And now take your choice of grab bars for the backs of the seats and uh, you can either use the uh, split or the single. And they get painted uh, black silk mat before they're attached to the back of the seat assembly. I chose these parts for the uh, rear seat option, uh, option for this unit and um, as you can see they get painted similarly except the, the grab bar there it gets painted white uh, silk white silk mat for this one and then the uh, uh, whole seat assembly gets attached to the seat frame which is also uh, at this point white. so the second seat option involves parts uh, from C65 to E70 and again I mark those uh, pieces of uh, numbers on the bottom so I remember what goes to what that might help you too and then uh, they are assembled, assembled and uh, painted semi-gloss black and gray uh, that mix and then attached to the right side of uh, seat six, six, C67 and 65 then to the other side of 67 the grab bars for this set of seats are once again uh, split for the German version and then the others are one piece uh, that gets painted white silk mat and attached to the back of the seat assembly. Now the other um, option for this uh, rear seat section um, involves pieces uh, from 74 to 77 and um, they're painted in similar fashion and uh, the seat assembly gets attached to the base then uh, which it gets painted uh, uh, black silk mat before the seat assemblies get attached to the chassis and I want to remind you I'm I'm building both versions but you only get one one kit you have to choose uh, between the two versions for a single box kit uh, but here I'm building both uh, just to show you the comparison and now we're going to use these pieces um, and attach the uh, rear seat back G79 um, um, is going to have a uh, part J80 uh, placed on it and then the rear seat back assembly gets attached to rear seat G81. Now the rear seat assembly gets painted with that 50-50 mix of uh, semi-gloss black and gray and then detailed with some Revell uh, aluminum metallic. And now you can get out the uh, parts for the other jump seat there and assemble that and both are finished in the same manner and uh, put one on the left and one on the uh, appropriate side of the right. There's two options for the front bumper. Um, the smaller one there comes attached and you can either e leave it that way and paint the, the bumper aluminum and the bracket is uh, gloss black or you can um, you know drill out a couple of holes in the bumper and attach the larger one uh, in this fashion. We'll get out a couple of uh, interior pieces here there's uh, the right side H86 um, and the left side is 85 and they get painted in uh, uh, kind of a crazy mix of colors here that is described on the Revell website under their color system tab uh, but most of it's indicated in your instructions and uh, except uh, the uh, the door handles for each are both a uh, silk mat in other words a flat white uh, similarly the rear interior panel gets the same kind of color treatment and the uh, the grab bar there J87 is also a white silk mat and that's in, uh, in turn attached to the rear interior section uh, like the left and right ones were. Now taking a look at the um, dashboard here, um, the, um, the pedals and, uh, and of course the dashboards themselves are configured for left or right hand drive so you have to choose the, the one that you're going to build um, and then they get uh, uh, painted in the same basic uh, scheme as the rest of the interior. The pedals, of course, are uh, underneath the steering wheel, whichever side you're going to put that on. So now we're going to use these pieces, um, that bulkhead and steering wheel and the uh, cylinder, master cylinder there. And we're going to, um, uh, we have to do a little work on this on part K96. That's the, um, the bulkhead for the dash and actually part of the firewall. Um, and and um, depending on whether it's left or right hand drive, you'll have to uh, drill out different holes and or different slots for attachments. Um, it's uh, finished in basically the same colors and uh, uh, as the underhood area along with uh, some of the body color there. And go ahead and assemble that uh, and uh, then you can attach the steering wheel and the cylinders and the pieces into position uh, and get those ready for installation. Now before we can um, start doing body prep we have to determine whether you want right or left hand drive because that determines 
which uh, rear view side mirror goes on uh, into place and then of course which holes you need to drill. So uh, determine which ones you want to use and then um, we can get that body ready for prepping. Now after the, um, the holes are, are drilled out and smoothed over we're going to prep the body uh, with some light aircraft gray and then uh, spray it with a 3 to 2 mix of Ravel light blue matte and Ravel color mix uh, as we talked about earlier and then spray the uh, uh, testers gloss clear coat and then the roof finally uh, is uh, masked off and painted um, with some gloss white. And so you see here the uh, side view mirrors, the larger ones are painted um, uh, silver and then detailed with a little um, uh, flat black and then the rear view mirror that's part E108 it gets painted black uh, flat black and detailed with some silver and also there's a decal that can be applied to that. So then go ahead and install the mirrors into the body assembly. Now locate the uh, windshield frame wipers and the uh, windshield glass there and we're going to paint the um, the frame of course uh, first it gets a coat of gray and then it gets painted with that 3-2 mix of blue and color mix and sprayed then with some gloss coat and then um, also we're going to detail these uh, gaskets with some flat black and the uh, windshield halves then are installed into the frame with some clear uh, part cement and the, um, the windshield wipers get painted flat black before they're attached to the frame. And now I'll locate the, um, the grill um, and uh, the, the radiator portions get painted with some flat black and then um, the highlighted sections with some silver metallic and then you can glue that into the body. Now we'll work on the headlight uh, lenses and uh, we're going to um, install those into the body assembly with some clear part cement and they get um, uh, placed there into the nacelles and allow those to dry. And now you can apply decal 19 Land Rover uh, script there and then uh, decal 8 goes uh, inside uh, under the hood there uh, just to buy the radiator. And here is the uh, window glass to the left side and uh, before you install these with some clear part cement um, uh, you need to uh, detail the window ledges uh, with some flat black um, and also you know uh, get that those dry before you install them. Install the right side windows in a similar fashion and then the rear windows get installed into the body uh, in the same way and then uh, it gets detailed again with some black uh, flat black or silk mat and then some Ravel aluminum color. So gather up these parts and the uh, the roof section and the spare tire wheel as well as actually the windows actually get a coat of uh, gloss white paint and then once those are dried um, the four roof windows get uh, installed after you um, uh, use some black um, uh, color to um, imitate the gaskets around those uh, roof windows and also the, the spare tire rim uh, once again once that is dry you can install that into a tire and then the bracket there gets painted silver and attached to the uh, tire rim and then the whole assembly then is attached to the the roof section along with the um, the windows which can be installed with some clear uh, clear uh, cement. Now locate the mounting points for your body onto the uh, chassis assembly. Uh, make sure there's no, pa no paint there and use some strong glue epoxy uh, or some uh, tube glue that's um, you know generously applied to those location points and install the body onto the chassis assembly making sure that all the contacts um, meet properly and you've got the symmetry between the chassis sections and the body itself. Now locate the roof rails you see here on this sprue and paint those gloss white and uh, let those dry and then we're going to attach the uh, roof section assembly uh, to the body on top there and then uh, go ahead and glue the roof rails into place. Now locate the um, the uh, light lenses here and uh, in the front there's a, a set of clears that go on the upper section and then you're going to use some uh, Ravel orange clear for the lower ones and after those dry install them in front. In the back um, there's going to be the orange ones are on the top and then uh, the lower ones will be painted with uh, some clear some clear red 
and once dried attached with some of that um, clear glue uh, to the back uh, of the assembly. Now we continue some work in the back end and uh, 154 and 5 then are painted with some flat black those uh, brackets and attached to the uh, body assembly and then uh, part 156 um, also painted with some black matte and detailed with little silver metallic before being attached to the body. The two tail lights, uh, O uh, 149 and 152, get painted with some of that um, clear red and then attached uh, to the body. Look for the uh, mounting bracket and the license plate bracket, and I'm going to paint those gloss black. And depending on whether you have right or left hand drive, uh, that determines which side of the back end to mount your license uh, plate bracket. Uh, this one being right hand drive, you see the plate uh, for the uh, mount, mounting plate for the license on the right hand side. Now you see the parts for the uh, the wheel assemblies. You're going to remove the um, the sprue attachments in the middle of the wheels there with a the hobby knife. And then you see up at the top the hubs. Uh, those are going to get trapped between the inner and the outer wheels uh, in order for them to attach to the spindles and rotate. Um, the um, uh, the outer hubs uh, wheels there, of course, uh, painted gloss white. So look for these pieces in the kit. These are underhood pieces uh, going to the engine bay, and follow the color callouts there at the um, instructions. Uh, now, just a reminder: the instructions full set are at the back of the review. If you need to see exactly what colors those are, and then install those into the engine bay area of the body assembly and uh, you've got a nice clean looking engine in this uh, Land Rover. Next we'll get the hood out of the kit box and uh, we're going to paint the uh, top side body color. After that's dry you can detail the underside with some uh, some anthracite matte color uh, which is a very dark dark gray. Um, the hood then gets installed onto the body assembly um, and the tire assemblies are also added to the spindles. We'll add a few body pieces now and as you see here uh, there is optional uh, fender or I should say a door mounted side view mirrors which can be used for this kit as opposed to the um, uh, fender mounted uh, rear view mirrors. And uh, they get painted um, you know flat black and detailed with some silver metallic uh, and then installed into the body uh, which is what I did for this uh, right hand version. And there is decals for the mirrors. Uh, but if you want to, uh, you can use those or just detail that with some silver paint. Now the antenna is painted silver metallic and installed into the body assembly. And it gets e on put on to either the left or the right side depending on your version. And there's also an optional antenna that can be attached to the roof of the body assembly as well. Now we can uh, work with the hood prop uh, and the um, uh, badging here. And depending on left or right hand drive, um, your, ba your badge will be uh, painted black matte and then um, detailed um, and, and installed on either the left or the right hand side. Uh, this one uh, goes on the left hand um, side because it's a right hand drive body. Um, now the uh, prop rod there uh, can be painted um, uh, aluminum or uh, flat black and there's color call outs for all these pieces. Um, you can use your discretion or follow those and there's two optional decals that can be applied to part C 115. Well there you have it. Install your decals and your model is complete. Uh, and as I mentioned I did both the right and left hand drive just because uh, I wanted to <laughs> and I thought it would be a neat diversion there. They're identical except for that and of course the exterior color uh, but uh, they both go together the same way. And the kit does contain some other optional builds um, uh, which you can investigate. Uh, but it went together very well. Uh, there, there is some difficult pieces here and that rates it uh, for more or less the advanced builder. And there's a lot of decals as well. Um, and considering the instructions are very well uh, designed, it's still, you still have to focus in order to make sure you uh, keep your right and left hand drive options separate. So if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this step-by-step -step premium model kit review. And so you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the icon in the lower right hand of any of our reviews. And you could find us on Facebook or our website.
rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.